Hello, and welcome to the Rotobrush equipment training video. This video is designed to give you a quick start for your indoor air quality and energy efficiency service. You will learn some great tips and techniques that will help you with all aspects of explaining air duct cleaning and dryer vent cleaning to your customer. Once you gain some hands-on experience with the equipment, we invite you to come to our certified training center. Here you can learn ways to expand your cleaning skills as well as effective ways to grow your business. We are going to go over each of the hoses and brushes and where to use them. This is the two and a quarter inch hose. It's the largest hose we offer. You will want to use this hose in every application you can since it provides the most airflow and is also the most rigid to help navigate through the ducting. You can also use the two and a quarter inch hose in many six inch ducts. We also have a cable extension that attaches to the end of all of the hoses and all of the brushes to help you make tight corners and also when cleaning trunk lines. The one and a half inch hose has about half of the airflow of the two and a quarter inch and it's a lot more flexible. So where the two and a quarter inch doesn't fit, you will use the one and a half inch hose. Next we have the one and a quarter inch dryer vent hose. The most airflow that this can handle is a six inch duct. In most cases, this is used exclusively in dryer vents, but occasionally wall stacks. Let's talk brushes. There are two types, soft and stiff bristle. The stiff brushes have both blue and green bristles, and the soft have only green bristles. The stiff bristle brushes are used for aggressive cleaning applications in sheet metal ducting, but should not be used in flex duct, duct board, or duct liner. The soft bristle brushes can be used in any application, with the 8-inch brush being the most commonly used in all applications including sheet metal, flex duct, and duct board. You'll want to keep in mind to increase the size of your brush two to four inches larger than the horizontal height of the duct. Next we are going to connect the drive cable. You simply insert the drive cable into the back of the machine until it stops. Once the cable stops, you will turn the black rubber housing of the drive cable either clockwise or counterclockwise. It doesn't matter which way, and at this point, it will slide in another half inch. Then take it and give it a pull to make sure it is engaged. Make sure you have the cable locked in prior to machine use. It is very common for techs to take the cable, slide it in place without locking, and then reconnecting the hose. Without locking the cable into place, it will just slide right back out. Next, we will talk about filtration. Your machine comes pre-installed with a filter bag and an HEPA filter. These are both located under the lid of your unit. The filter bag can be removed by sliding it out from under the metal tab. There is a flap you can fold over to prevent the spilling of dust out of the bag. As an option, you can fill this bag halfway before needing to change. You can use one bag for multiple jobs or multiple bags per job. It all depends on the application. The HEPA filters will need to be cleaned with compressed air from inside out or contact vacuum from the outside. Never get these filters wet. Make sure your techs do not beat them on the wall because the end cap or glue could break causing damage to the filter. If the filter gets wet, they are ruined and will need to be replaced. When you arrive at your customer's home, remember that first impressions go a long way. For example, we recommend wearing disposable shoe covers while working. Take time to explain what you will be doing and answer any questions that your customers have. Next, perform a site inspection to develop a cleaning game plan. This includes finding the location of all the thermostats, registers, air handlers, and also to determine the general layout of the ductwork. All central air conditioning and heating systems have three main components. The return air ducts draw room air back into the system for conditioning. That conditioning is performed by the air handler, where the air may be heated, cooled, humidified, or dehumidified. Supply air ducts provide the filtered and conditioned air back into the room space. Filtration may occur at the return air ducts opening or at the air handler itself. Understanding the layout of the duct work is important. You will start cleaning the supply side of the air ducts beginning with the ducts farthest from the air handler. Then clean the other supply air ducts working progressively back towards the air handler. 
This ensures the areas you have already cleaned will not be recontaminated. Explain that the central air system will be turned off during the cleaning process. Prior to cleaning the air ducts, you need to prepare the area where you will be working. You want to make sure you have all furniture and or home accessories away from the area you will be working in. A drop cloth works great to make sure you are catching any particulate and it's a great way to show the customers you're concerned about taking care of their home. A battery powered screwdriver is generally the best tool for removing a register. You may find a register that is painted such as this one or it may be caulked. Sometimes it may freely come off. If it is painted over or caulked, use your knife and cut away from the corners in. If you go all the way off one edge, you have a good chance of marking the entire wall. After you have removed the registers, you will clean the register and the boot opening. If there are heavy contaminants, you'll want to mark it so you will know where it goes when you return from cleaning it. If the registers are not heavily soiled, use your nozzle adapter and dust brush to vacuum. You may also use a HEPA filtered shop vac. Also vacuum out the boot area. Clean the area as much as possible prior to cleaning with the brush beast. If you determine the register covers are going to need more aggressive cleaning, remove all affected and take them outside for cleaning. Let's start cleaning air ducts. First, turn on the vacuum switch. Make sure you don't turn on the brush before it is inserted into the air duct, otherwise contaminants could release back into the area. Once you have the vacuum on and the brush is inserted into the air duct, turn on the brush rotation and start cleaning. Insert the hose into the air duct at a rate of about one half to one foot per second. Now, if you are cleaning rectangle duct work, you need to use the sweeping method to assure you are cleaning all sides of the duct work. You will sweep the air duct by first inserting the brush and the hose all the way down the duct line. Then reverse the brush rotation to cause the brush to travel towards the other side of the duct. Next, pull the brush back about six inches and then reverse the direction again. Repeat as needed to clean the length of the duct. Prior to removing the brush from any air duct, make sure you turn off the brush rotation and move on to the other rooms. Repeat this process to clean all rooms. Once you have cleaned all the supply air ducts, proceed to clean the return air ducts. Next is the return side of the system. Here we have a return grill, which you are going to either have filtration system in the ceilings walls are at the unit. Typically, you will have less return than you will supplies in a home. As with supply air ducts, first vacuum the return register as well as the boot area. Insert the brush with the vacuum on and engage the brush rotation. Again, insert the hose at a rate of one half to one foot per second. While removing the hose, make sure that you wrap it around the machine. This keeps the work area safe and orderly. This also prevents the hose and cable from binding, which can cause the cable to weaken or break. Throughout different parts of the country, you will see ducts called wall stacks. This is actually ducting that is inside of the home that is sheetrocked in. It will drop down and go off either direction or straight back towards you. It's typically found in bathrooms, but can be found anywhere. In these cases, use your one and a half inch hose with an eight inch brush, less the cable extensions, for that could make it difficult. This allows you the flexibility to make this corner without any difficulties at all. Again, it will allow you to go any direction you need to go. And this is a great time to use the directional control to go any direction. Also, many contractors use the cable extensions anywhere and own all of the hoses throughout the cleaning process. In the event that your brush or hose gets hung up in the air duct, here are three ways to help retrieve it. The first and most effective method is to simply push the hose six inches to 12 inches forward and give it a quick firm pull backwards. This allows the brush to center in the air duct and come backwards over whatever is obstructing it. 
The next option is to twist the hose clockwise or counterclockwise. This allows the hose to act like a corkscrew and any obstruction can be eliminated. The other option is to change the brush direction via brush control. Let's move on to the cleaning of the air handler. The air handler can be located in attics or crawl spaces or even basements in different parts of the country. The air handler draws the air from the conditioned space and the dirty room air brings it to the handler itself and heats it, cools it, conditions it, dehumidifies it, humidifies it, and brings it back into the rooms throughout the home. Because of the contaminants that can load up in the air handling unit, it is very important to make sure to topically clean the air handler unit as well. How much work you can do within the air handler will be determined by your state licensing. The coils themselves are a breeding ground for microbial contaminants. Dirty coils can decrease the efficiency of the unit due to buildup of dander, dust, pollen, and mold. Deep source cleaning the system starts with taking apart the air handler. To do this, first remove the nuts and face plates with the 5 32nd nut driver. Be sure to use the shop vac attachments with the brush beast unit and or use a separate shop vac. If you see a lot of accumulation throughout the system, this is probably a good time to actually refer this business to a licensed HVAC contractor that can deep source clean and remove the contaminants within the system. This is also an excellent opportunity for you to develop a relationship and networking with an HVAC contractor for business referrals. While at the air handler, inspect the ductwork throughout the system and look for any cracks, tears, or ducts that are pulled away from the registers. Any mild and minor repairs can be accomplished with aluminum foil tape. Aluminum foil tape is easy to use and apply. If this improves the efficiency of the air handling unit, most homeowners would be happy to pay for this service. Next up is fogging. Typically what we use for fogging is Envirocon. This is an antimicrobial fungistat, deodorstat, that is ready to use. No water or mixing is needed. Pour this into the fogger. Typically, you will want to put a third to half a gallon in. If you put the whole gallon, you just have to carry around the weight because each gallon is enough for about 10 to 12 jobs. Next, tighten down the lid and you are ready to fog. Typically, the rule of thumb is 45 to 60 seconds per 1,000 square feet of room space is how long you will fog through the return. Turn on the fan on the air handling system, not heating or cooling, just the fan only that is controlled by the thermostat itself. Next, go to each return with the fogger. Turn on the machine and turn the valve counterclockwise until you see a light mist. Once you see a light mist, fog for 45 to 60 seconds per 1,000 square feet of room space. If you have multiple returns, you will have to divide that up between each return. Make sure you turn off the valve prior to turning off the motor to prevent spillage. Lastly, install the filter, close the door, and turn on the air handler. Always remember to keep your chemicals in a climate-controlled environment to prolong their life. As we discussed, Envirocon is what you use in your normal day-to-day -day duct cleanings. When you run across strong odors, fire damage restoration, or remediation type of work, you're going to need something with a little bit more strength. Oxine is basically the same thing as Envirocon, just a higher concentration. But because of that, there are more requirements you will have to meet. It is all stated in the MSDS sheet. The most important one is use of organic vapor acid gas respirators, which is identified by the yellow band. You will want to wear this during the mixing process and also during the fogging process. The other thing you will want to do is to make sure the home or business is evacuated for at least one hour and that there is nobody in the home with you while you are fogging. Sometimes we are asked what other applications the air duct cleaning equipment can be used for. There are two applications that it should not be used for. First is chimney cleaning due to the risk of potential cross-contamination from creosote. Second is kitchen exhaust cleaning due to the grease that sets in the kitchen exhaust. These require high pressured steam to clean. Dryer vent cleaning is a valuable service that your equipment can provide. The Consumer Product Safety Commission states that over 15,000 fires annually, 20 deaths, 
and over $75 million a year in damages are contributed to dryer fires. Right now is a great time for you to sell this as a service for your customers. Now let's talk about cleaning dryer vents. To clean dryer vents, you will need the Roto Vent Vac, HD Vac, or air duct cleaning machine installed with the smallest hose, which is the one and a quarter inch hose. You will also need a four inch brush, the Y adapter, and your brush auger. You will want to use the four inch brush. A brush too large could push debris forward and cause a blockage. Please see the owner's manual for more detailed instruction. Well, that about wraps it up. Remember, you also have other resources available to you, like your owner's manual and our 24-7 tech support line. We sincerely appreciate your business, and we hope to see you at one of our certified air duct training courses. Thanks for watching.